Hi, I'm uh, Roger Waterhouse. I uh, work at uh, Art Tech Incorporated, and uh, I've been working on this uh, totem pole for the Log House Museum. Uh, this is one of the specialties that Art Tech has, is uh, restoration conservation totem poles. I personally, uh, with a couple other uh, uh, people at Art Tech, have, have uh, focused on the conservation of totem poles. For me personally, uh, it's an incredible opportunity uh, to get to know what's so great about one of the history of the Northwest. It's, it does become almost spiritual uh, when, you, when you work on these things. You're intimately touching them uh, as if you were part of the, the process of making the totem pole. I, I, you know these things, you think about them at night when you wake up in the morning. It's, it's a huge charge. It's sort of kind of spiritual in a way. Uh, I don't know how else to explain it, but it's pretty exciting to be involved with these. Over the years, uh, the totem poles we've worked on, we've got to meet a lot of the carvers and uh, various members of the tribes, and they they almost always ask you, "Did you get anything out of it?" And uh, you always say you did. It's pretty cool. I don't know what it is, but um, you know, there's something there. They they're they're there. They these were made for a reason. Uh, and um, I'm glad that you know uh, we get to be a part of that. And uh, so she's pretty close to being done. Uh, we did pretty much a complete restoration on it. It was in actually really good shape. The people who had stored it did a uh, real nice job of taking care of it. It was up off the ground, away from any uh, big buildup of debris, and I think apparently for the most well, uh, most part uh, had good ventilation yet still was covered so there was no uh, no growth of anything uh, too detrimental on it so our work was uh, pretty easy and it's also it's a really good uh, really good piece of wood uh, we basically started with uh, a complete cleaning of the totem pole dry brush and then a wet clean uh, get all the the growth that was on it there was a little bit of lichen and uh, some moss and a few of the little uh, uh, enclosed areas, no bug uh, damage at all, so that was really pleasant to uh, see. Uh, anyway, after the cleaning, um, uh, we let it set for a while in, in this space here alongside some other totem poles, uh, and uh, it just naturally dried out or became drier. Uh, we don't want them to totally dry out, of course, but uh, there's a certain stage there, a content of moisture that you want, to, want it to get to, and, and uh, at that point then, we started putting uh, some borate-based preservatives in the, uh, in the wood, let those soak in. Uh, again, it dries a little bit. We put in some, uh, some penetrating oils, some really light, uh, light grade uh, oils in, for insecticide and fungicide uh, purposes. And then we did a complete repaint. Uh, the colors uh, on this pole were taken from the original. Uh, there were quite a few areas that we got some good paint samples. Uh, we took those samples off, we did a little bit of analysis of what those uh, colors probably were, and it was pretty much a standard uh, brown and black and reds that are traditional in Native American uh, uh, totem poles. And then, so you got that palette of uh, brown, black, reds, uh, whites, and, and green. Uh, we, we put two coats of paint on, on uh, each, uh, each uh, surface and uh, in between there was probably a week and a half of drying time. 
we put the paint down uh, into the cracks just in an aesthetic manner. We want to leave the cracks unpainted as much as we can because when we come in now in a couple weeks, we'll be putting a, a, a second uh, coat of a different type of an oil on, on this. And we want that oil to run in here so that the wood gets uh, re-energized with oil. The cellulose uh, tends to expand and it becomes more water resistant. Uh, so we a lot of these cracks then will be uh, will be used as conduits for us to uh, enter uh, uh, for the entry of more oil for uh, preservation purposes. Uh, we like I say there was no insect damage. There's very few areas of loss. So where there's this is 100% wood, uh, the same as when it was carved for the most part. And so it, this is one of the few tomes poles we've had like that. I'm not really sure why, but uh, probably because it's it's pretty much 100% paint covered doesn't make any difference um, it's in good shape so uh, we're thankful for that I think probably the last uh, the last thing we want to say about this poll is that it has so much uh, story and interest in it the the, the critters the animal uh, figures and human figures along here are are uh, I think probably more you might say user-friendly and they're 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 it's easier I think it's going to be easier for the public to understand what why these are what they are. Pretty much the same characters here that you see in other totem poles, but these were done with a little bit more of a, of a purpose, you might say, for the general public, and at least that's our feeling. And so it's, it's I think it's gonna be a good educational tool. And, and we've talked about this, the people who've worked on this poll. I think this is one where uh, it's, it's gonna be super important to have in the community because you can go and say, oh, that is absolutely a frog, or that is absolutely a beaver, or no, that's not a raven, that's an eagle. I think you're gonna be able to understand the whys and why nots uh, of, of Native American myth uh, from this poll a little bit easier than some of the other traditional uh, poles carved just for uh, Native American interpretation. So uh, that again was another thing that made this poll just seem, has a little bit more charm.